Great intro. Great intro. Great music. Derek Wilburn, greatest country in the United States of in the in the world is the United States of America. You're here for Uncle Tom Talks Tuesday edition. Um, first of all, let me say so. I am aware that Uncle Tom Talks this podcast is not where it needs to be technically yet. Uh, I've got connection bandwidth issues. We've got just some stuff going on. It's it's good, but it's not great. So if you're still watching or listening or catching Uncle Tom Talks later on Spotify or whatever, then that means that you like the content enough that you're willing to look past the content delivery issues. And I thank you uh, for that because that tells me a lot um, about the quality of what I'm bringing you. And, uh, and I love it. I am wearing one of my mini shirts for the Classical Academy track field cross country the classical academy tca tca is the school my children have all attended one of them still does it is a k through 12 charter school my my youngest is in high school there now northern colorado uh, northern colorado springs and the classical academy tomorrow is almost assuredly going to win yet another league meet league title in both boys and girls track and field and next week is almost undoubtedly going to win yet another state title both boys and girls that school it is unbelievable the running program the running programs at that school cross country in the fall of course track and field in the spring all three of my kids have been runners my daughter was also a jumper they all have state titles um, plaques, trophies, ribbons, and stuff all over the place. And the, 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 the Classical Academy wins the Colorado State 3A Boys and Girls Championship uh, almost every year. If they don't win it, they come in second place. And this has been going on forever. My oldest son graduated in 2014, went on to run for the Air Force Academy, but uh, he graduated high school with nine state championships, nine state, four or five of which, four or five were team, uh, my youngest son, the runner now, they just won cross country in the fall. The girls won the state cross country championship as well. TCA is legit. The, the Classical Academy Titans. So go TCA. TCA, by the way, also an incredible school academically. Uh, the school has amongst the highest in the state. Um, grade point averages. Uh, it's, a classic, it's a classical education. Uh, highest in or among the highest in the state college entrance exam scores uh, among the highest in the state just everything academically yet liberals want to do away with with charter schools they can't stand them they hate educational choice uh, that's a show for another day today we're going to get into a little bit of social commentary so we all know what's going on around the country uh, as the Supreme Court apparently is mulling Roe versus Wade and overturning it, uh, and people are out picketing and protesting outside their personal property, outside of their residences. I mean, they're out there wearing their scarlet outfits and, and protesting and doing what these people do. Uh, their their homes, that where they live with their families. And I've talked about abortion on this show, and I think they're fairly clear. Um, and, and there's not a lot of middle ground when it comes to abortion. Uh, there's not a lot of people who are on the fence. You tend to be one side or the other. And I've delineated this many times in the past, won't belabor it now, but there's really only two sides. Pro-baby, right? Pro-life in the womb and pro-women's rights. The left, the women's rights side, can't and won't talk about the baby because there's no positive outcome for the child, right? That's the child gets destroyed and its parts sold. Um, so they only wanna talk about women's rights and we're not gonna get into that today, but there are two topics I am gonna get into. One of which is abortion and what was recently said in a Senate hearing to Senator Tim Scott, whom I happen to know, um, very, very decent human being, incredible senator, hope he runs for president one day. Um, and the issue of what's happening with health and human services and the evolution of leftist ideology in this country on the issue of gender. 
And that is another piece of testimony from a member of your presidential cabinet. Um, well, we're going to start off with Senator Scott. So there was an exchange in, I'm not sure which committee that what this was, um, obviously a, a committee that, that Senator Scott sits on. And he addressed the Treasury Secretary, Secretary Yellen, who is an interesting individual, on her statement that ending the life of a child is good for our labor force participation rate. Yes, you heard me correctly. Aborting a child, ending a child's life is actually good for our labor force participation rate. What a calloused, it's, it's an, I don't know how it's possible to devalue human life to that point, but that's what the left has done because they don't consider what exists in the womb a human life. Remarkably, it is a human life. Now we can debate whether or not that life is entitled to constitutional rights or is entitled to any level of legal protection at all. That is the debate and, and it's a robust one, but you can't debate what exists is a human life. It is a pre-born human. It's not a stalk of celery. It's not a squirrel. It's going to become a little boy or a little girl in approximately nine months, give or take a day or two, sometimes a week or two. It's a human life. And the left has just reached the point where they don't, that's not even true to them. It's not a human life. It's just the way that they see it. I don't, I don't that in a demeaning kind of way in terms of how I'm addressing the left. I'm not saying that to demean them. I'm saying matter-of-factly, they simply don't be what exists in the womb is a human life, or at least uh, maybe not all of them. 60, 70 percent, I don't know what the, per the percentage is, but you, you hear them sometimes on radio call-in shows and what have you. They will not admit that what exists in the womb is a human life. I uh, can't because that shifts the debate onto ground where they really don't win. So they have to keep it about a woman's rights. Okay, so let's play, uh, get cut number one ready, um, Zach. So this show, by the way, is being produced by Mix Master Z. Uh, he is spinning the discs and keeping everything on track. And cut number one from um, Senate hearing a handful of days ago. This isn't very long. Uh, maybe I'll let it play through. Senator Scott, there's really no need, need for me to paraphrase or sum, sum up what he says. He's very clear. He's very succinct. He's very articulate. And then listen to Yellen's response. Cut number one. Some of your comments in response to Bob's question I found troubling. And I, I, just from a clarity's sake, did you say that ending the life of a child is good for the labor force participation rate? Giving someone the access, let me just quote what you said, that ultimately increasing access to abortion uh, and re reproductive health care allows for our labor force participation rate to continue to increase, that denying women access to abortion increases their odds of living in poverty or need for public assistance as a guy who was raised by a single mom who worked long hours to keep us out of poverty. I think people can disagree on the issue of being pro-life or, or, or pro-abortion, but in the end, I think framing it in the context of labor force participation is, it just feels calloused to me. I, I think Slightly. finding a way to have a debate around abortion in a, a, a meeting for the economic stability of our country is harsh. Uh, and I'm just surprised that we find ways to weave into every facet of our lives such, such an important and painful reality for so many people to make it sound like it's just a, another 0.4% added to our labor force participation as a result of the issue of abortion just to me seems harsh. Well, I, I certainly right don't mean to um, 
Okay, back it up a little so we get all of her response. But of course, he's right. It is very calloused. It's very harsh. But abortion to the left, and Yellen clearly is a leftist, so she wouldn't be in the Biden administration. Abortion to them is just another medical procedure. It, it's getting a tooth extracted. Um, you know, it, it's a medical procedure. It, it's not terminating a life. So what she has said, it, I said I wasn't going to paraphrase what Tim Scott said, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. Essentially, the argument that she has made previously in, in response to a different senator's question is that terminating a pregnancy positively impacts the labor participation rate in this country because the expectant mother, therefore, doesn't miss so much work. Right? So if you're pregnant, and those of you have been there, I never have, but as we'll talk about in the next segment, that was my choice, apparently. When you're expectant, you know, once you get into that eighth month, uh, eight months in a week, two weeks, three weeks, heading into the night, it, it, you get disabled. It is very difficult to, depending upon what your job is, um, it may be impossible to continue working if it's something a little more physical. But you do reach a point as you come to the end of the term of the pregnancy where you punch out, you check out of work, right? You stop going to work every day, you're, you're about to give birth. And then you have the, the child and you typically are out of the labor force, out of your job for a number of weeks thereafter, if you intend to go back at all. If you don't go back at all, then you're a permanent deletion from that statistic. Some mothers just take a week off, a month off, three months off, five months off, whatever, and then come back. But for whatever the span of time is, between when you leave your job, you deliver the baby, and you come back to your job, you're out of the labor force. So you have negatively impacted the labor force participation rate in the country. However, if you just terminate the pregnancy and kill the baby off and have it sucked out with a vacuum hose one afternoon, you're back to work the next day. That, that doesn't affect anything. So therefore, aborting babies actually has a positive impact on our labor force participation statistics. What a calloused, Senator Scott summed it up perfectly. How callous can you possibly be? So here's her response to Senator Scott. The issue of abortion just to me seems harsh. And well, I, I certainly don't mean to um, say what I think the effects are in a manner that's harsh. What we're talking about is um, whether or not women will have the ability um, to regulate their reproductive um, situation in ways that will enable them to plan lives that are fulfilling and satisfying for them. And one aspect of a satisfying life is being able to feel that you have the financial resources to raise a child, that the children you bring into the world are wanted and that you have the ability to take care of them. In many cases, um, abortions are of teenage women, um, particularly low income and often black, who um, aren't in a position to be able to care for children, have um, unexpected pregnancies, and it deprives them of the ability often to continue their education, to later participate in the workforce. So there, there is a spillover into labor force participation, yeah. but, and uh, it means that children will grow up in poverty yeah. and do, do worse themselves. Thank and you. Let me, let is, me just this say is my not time harsh. on the topic. This I, is the truth. I'll just simply say that as a guy raised by a black woman in abject poverty, I'm thankful to be here as United States Senator first. Second thing I Amen. Tim Scott, born to a single black mom in poverty. Dr. Benjamin Carson, born to a single black mom in poverty, raised in the projects in the government hood in Detroit, became the world's most renowned brain surgeon. So she just admitted it, first of all, that this is disproportionately affecting black women. And that's another discussion altogether. I'm glad she came out and said it. But we, 
black Americans through our blind, unfailing, undying support of a political party are in essence helping to exterminate ourselves. Okay, we're only 12.9% of the national population, yet black women account for more than a third of all abortions. We're exterminating ourselves. But of course, when you listen to her answer carefully, of course, she only talks about the mother, never any mention of the child, because I've already covered that. And what she essentially said is that if a woman is not in a position financially to be able to support a baby, the best thing for her to do is to eliminate that baby. That's basically what she said. Hey, if you're not ready financially to support a child, it's better to get rid of the child. And she draws the assumption that the child will therefore be in poverty and be worse off as well, as if adopting or, or, or what have you. As if there are no other alternatives. But that's the argument. That's the argument that if you, it's, it's very selfish, if you aren't ready for a baby, then the thing to do is to kill the baby. Why, why is the baby pay the price? Why is the baby punished? Why does the baby, why does the baby have to pay with her life? And then she talks about reproductive, uh, their reproductive plans and whatever, however she phrased it. You know, there are methods and mechanisms available today wherein a person can have intercourse, but be assured of not getting pregnant. You know, there's ways to prevent this, but the left and Secretary Yellen sees abortion as a form of birth control, essentially. And that's why they wanted early term, late term, publicly financed. I mean, they just want abortion unfettered. And that's she also why said stopping. not wanted. Did you hear that? She said not, not wanted. wanted. Yeah, not wanted. You know, uh, my youngest wasn't wanted. My youngest child wasn't a wanted pregnancy. We didn't plan or expect him. He was the oops, honey, guess what, baby. And I can't imagine my life without my youngest son. He's the most incredible human being. I already told you about, uh, he's, he's running a four and a half minute mile. He's gonna, he's gonna win state in, I don't know how many different races, events this year. He just won a state title in cross country in the fall. Uh, he has a 4.3 and some change grade point average at one of the most academically challenging schools in the state. He takes all advanced placement classes, and I'm talking physics, calculus, chemistry. I mean, he's very, very brilliant. He just got a 35 on his SATs. The best you can get is a 36. He's getting letters from Harvard and everywhere else every single day. He wants to get a degree, his degrees in physics, and he... Uh, he, he's interested in the school of Colorado School of Mines because he's into uh, subterranean detonation and all this crazy stuff. He wasn't a planned or wanted pregnancy. He's going to change the world. He, he, he's, he's six foot three. He's gorgeous. He's just an incredible human being who is going to change the world. But according to people like Yellen, unplanned, unwanted, just like Dr. Ben Carson, just like Tim Scott, you're better off to get rid of them and stay in the labor force. So there's social issue number, social issue number two, this comes from the other chamber of the United States government, the House of Representatives, courtesy of Representative Lauren Boebert. Lauren Boebert is a representative from Colorado. She represents Colorado's second congressional district, I believe it is. Uh, I've met her. Don't know her well. We're not. We're not. We've just been in the same place at the same time a couple times. Um, but the left can't stand her. They hate her guts because uh, she's outspoken. She doesn't pull punches. She's not afraid to get. She's not afraid to get down and dirty and roll around. If you know what I'm saying. I mean, she'll put you in a headlock and take you to the mat. She does it on Twitter. She does it in committee. She does it everywhere all the time. Uh, some people say she's the rights version of. AOC on the left. I don't think that's an apt comparison. She draws as much attention as AOC, but to compare their level of intelligence, I don't think is uh, is fair. She asked some pointed questions to your director of health and human services in committee a few days ago, 
And this went somewhat predictably. So these people, when they come up in front of committees, they, they can't answer direct questions. You can't ask somebody a direct question and get a direct answer anymore. Those days are gone. If you review the senatorial, the Senate Judiciary Committee's hearings on Biden nominees to federal courts, they, 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 they do not answer questions. It, it's all a tap dance. Um, this wasn't as bad as some of the tap dances that you hear, but the point is some questions you wouldn't think would really require much thought to respond. Right, and if you ask me, if you approach me on the street and ask me, can men get pregnant? I can answer that question with one word and it has two letters and it begins with the letter N. It's not a complicated question in my view, but to the left, that's not so. To the left, this is a fairly complicated question. It's not as simple as left, right, up, down, black, white, hot, cold. There's no simple answers anymore when we're talking about the construct of human beings. So he has to walk a fine line because he can't offend the left by saying no. But he can't come off as looking like a fool by saying anything else because people like me are going to put it on the internet and talk about it. So people like this, they're caught between a rock and a very hard place. And Lauren Boebert is not one of the people that you want to have cornering you. So you, the rock is on one side and the hard place and she's on the other side. That's a pretty hard spot because she's just not going to back off and say, well, OK, you didn't want to answer the question. I'll move on. No, she's going to redirect and redirect and redirect, just like Ted Cruz, just like a lot of people, until she gets an answer. So this is cut number two. I want to say this is neighborhood of about five minutes. We'll pause a couple times, but here's how that went. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Secretary Becerra. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate you coming before the committee. Um, to start off, as a Secretary of Health and Human Services, can you define for this committee what is a man? You're looking at one. Great. So you are a man. I like that. Can you tell me can men get pregnant? Uh, unless you know something I don't, uh, I think the answer is pretty obvious. What is that answer, sir? I'm asking you, is there something you know that I don't know that would say that a man... Well, I'm asking pregnant? what you know. Can men Tap get pregnant? Dance. I'm not aware of it. Okay. Well, um, Mr. Secretary, materials coming from your department, you've referred to mothers as, as birthing persons, replacing that title with... Are, are mothers not persons? Mothers are persons, but it seems to be more inclusive, like you're trying to include another gender in that. I'm all about inclusion, Congresswoman. There you go. Um, so, well, you know, just as a mother of four boys, um, I'm not necessarily offended at that. I am a person, um, but it's just unscientific and absurd. Um, how, how so? To include men in that, if you're going a to person? be inclusive, if you're going to be inclusive in birthing persons, yes. Well, but, but but it seems to me that you're Let's trying back to define the term. Reclaiming my time. Can men get pregnant? So then we don't need to include them in this. Mothers are mothers. Moving forward, Mr. Secretary, I want to read Hello. for you um, from a document there. from your office. Okay, so um, here's what you, the, the, you see the tap dance. You see how he handled that. So yes birthing persons are women. The point she's making is that only women are birthing persons. Therefore, why is it necessary to call them birthing persons? It's, it's a term that's completely unnecessary, unless you're trying to include other people. So she, she cornered him. It, it was really craft. I actually wish she would have used a bigger hammer, but um, she's a nice person because she could have just swatted him down right then and there. Birthing persons. The, the fact that we're even having to have this discussion in our country, the, the fact that our elected representative is actually wasting time talking about this tells you all you need to know about the agenda and where our country is and where we're headed. 
that they have changed the documents to, from saying women and mother to saying birthing persons. So yeah, his cute little, I'm not aware of it, and are women not persons and all that stuff, that's all just a tap dance because she had him on the ropes and he couldn't say it. He couldn't come out and say, yes, only women give birth. Can't say that on the left anymore because if you're a woman, but you identify as a man, you are a man. So if you're a woman and you take hormones and you've grown a beard and you know you have the external appearance of a man and you your pronouns are he, him, and you've changed your name from Bernice to Bernard and, and all the things we see happening in society today. If, if you've done all that, to the left, you are a man, but you can still get pregnant. Some of them do. And if you give birth in that state, you are a birthing person because they can't say you're a woman because to them, you are not. Therefore, men can give birth. Now, I've got all the time I want on a podcast. Lauren Boebert doesn't have all the time she wants in committee hearing. She's going to get gaveled after a few minutes, so she had to keep on moving. Roll it. Mothers are mothers. Moving forward, Mr. Secretary, I want to read for you um, from a document from your office, um, the Office of um, Population Affairs. Um, it says in here, and I quote, Gender affirming care encompasses many facets of healthcare needs and support. It has been shown to increase positive outcomes for transgender and non binary children. Mr. Secretary, what is a transgender child? A, a child in America is a child in America, and I hope you and I can love that child just as much as we can. Can you define what a transgender child is? A, a, that's a child in America, and it's an American citizen child who needs the services and love just the way any other child does. Mr. Secretary, do you believe that a child is capable of making life-altering de uh, decisions to name themselves? So let me, let me just say to you that I don't agree with your premise, but what I will say to you is children know much about themselves and with the help of their- Do you believe that children are capable of making the decision to self-mutilate? Again, I don't necessarily accept the premise well, of Mr. your Secretary, question. Well, Mr. Secretary, I mean, you have gender-affirming care for young people. So this is something that you have looked over. I don't equate gender-affirming care to mutilation. So if that's where you're going, then you're not going to get the answer you want. So, um, Mr. Mr. Secretary here, can you, um, can you tell me if there have been mastectomies, um, uh, uh, mastectomies, penectomies, or hysterectomies on children? Well, I... I and have taxpayers funded that? So I, I could probably use the help of my wife, who's an OBGYN, who could talk for it, or maybe Dr. Burgess could, could help us out here. Or gender affirming care. No. So Should he doesn't know what she's talking about. I'm sorry, pose the question one more time, please. In this gender affirming care, Mr. Secretary, have there been tax dollars put forward to fund mastectomies, penectomies, and hysterectomies? for sex reassignment purposes for minors with gender dysphoria. So Americans are entitled to receive healthcare services. If they are entitled to receive any of the services that you just mentioned, then it would be against the law for us to try to deny them that care. So, so for the record, words, yes. you favor HHS's funding being able for, to, for sex reassignment for surgeries on minors. I will do everything I can to defend any American, including children, whether or not they fit the categories you have mentioned or not. And if they talk about gender affirming care, I am there to protect the rights of any American. Mr. Secretary, I want to turn to a different document. Your office released- um, Okay, uh, hold it right there. This, uh, uh, gender the affirming one. care. So, so that was the, uh, the uh, discussed. He can't answer, they can't answer questions. So she asks him, to tell her what a transgender child is. And his answer is a child in America. Well, his answer isn't technically wrong. A child in America is a child in America. I mean, she could have asked him, can you define for me what is a left-handed child? And if he said a left-handed child is a child in America, he'd be right. 
So she asks him, what's a transgender child? And he says, a child in America. So it's just a tap dance. He doesn't want to answer the question, can't answer the question, won't answer the question. But where she is going is these life altering medical procedures, mastectomy, uh, you heard the list, on minors, on 13 year olds. First of all, I, I don't know that any 12 year old, that's another story altogether. I don't know that any 12 year old knows for a fact that she is actually a he. Uh, I, I refuse to, at 12, you just don't, there's a lot of things you don't know, that's one of them. But if parents, for whatever reason, make the decision that, okay, we're going to turn Johnny into Joni, our 13 year old, our 10 year old, whatever, the person that the child is not of legal age, why in the name of all that is good and right, should it be your responsibility and mine to pay for it. That's what she's asking him. And he, well, I, I, I support the rights of all, all Americans have a right to pay, to help health services. So he's saying, yes, he, he does support that. You wanna know where your tax money goes? How it just goes poof in the night? It's things like this. That shouldn't be a, a, the responsibility of taxpayers. We shouldn't have to pay for that. I don't think that it should be done on any child, period. But if it is, it's not my job to pay for it. That's where she was going. He wouldn't answer those questions. In some ways, these hearings are, they're just a circus because you never get any, any real answers. But that's what's just happened. Okay, next question, roll it. There is trauma-informed care. In this document, you clearly state that gender-affirming care includes puberty blockers, hormones and surgeries for minor children. You go on to assure the parent to uh, assure parents that there is no scientifically sound reason to doubt hormones and surgeries are helpful to minor children. You also discuss this in a document that the potential for removing children from their parents is on the table if they're not providing providing gender affirming care. Mr. Secretary, do you think that parents who believe in two genders only should have their children removed from them. Secretary, you, Mr. Secretary, you can answer or respond can, in writing. Her time is expired. I, I can respond very quickly. Okay. Congresswoman, I, I believe in supporting and protecting transgender youth. I believe that they, along with their parents and their uh, caregivers, will make the best decisions. And I would really urge that politicians like you stay out of their business. I would urge that children get to stay with their parents. The no woman's time has expired. Uh, the committee. Mr. Chairman, will... may I please have unanimous? Mr. No, Chairman you can't. Consent. No, you may not. We're on a very tight time frame, and there's Enter this into the calls. congressional record. You may. Oh yes, you, you, Thank you, sir. without objection, you may do that. Um, all right, the committee will be in recess. Uh, please hurry back after so, the second it. vote. So there you have it. There you have it. There you have it. So if Mr. and Mrs. Jones have a daughter who is thinking maybe she's a boy and Mr. and Mrs. Jones are not supportive. Mr. and Mrs. Jones do not want puberty blockers given to their daughter to prevent her from entering into puberty as a girl. Your Department of Health and Human Services says that could well be grounds for removing that child from the home. As a parent, you're, you are losing all of your rights to these people because they just have gender madness on the brain. And that's why the Hollywood crowd are inarguably the most liberal. And, you know, these, here's what the one, uh, Charlize Theron, Theron, whatever her name is, I don't know these people, but she has a boy, a little boy. I think he was four or five years old at the time. He's probably six or seven or eight, eight now because this is a couple of years but basically, I mean, you know, she's giving the kid a bath and the boy, he says something like, look, mommy, I'm the little mermaid or something like this. And so she starts, changes his name to a female name, starts dressing him up in female, put him in a dress and what have you when they go out in public and starts raising him like a girl. He's a five-year-old child. It's just, it's just remarkable the speed with which the, the left is cramming this gender. These are children. They're children. My when I was 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, I was a mess. I didn't know what was up. I mean, I was all messed up.
started coming around to me and pulling me off to the side and saying, hey, you know, maybe you're, you know, putting this stuff into my forming brain. Who knows what I would have thought about all that? But that's what they want to do now. You're giving your seven-year-old a bath and he says, look at me, mommy, I'm the little mermaid. Or she says, look at me, daddy, I'm the Lion King. Oh, we've got a gender confused child. You know, girls, when I was growing up, young girls, 10, 11, 12, 14, whatever, who like to do things that boys like to do, play baseball, climb trees, catch earthworms, this stuff. We call them tomboys. And then a funny thing happened with tomboys. They reach a certain age. Chemicals begin to get released into their body. Hormones begin to get released to their body. Their bodies start to change. They start getting interested in boys. And after a while, they're not, they're not tomboys anymore. It's just a natural progression. It's just kind of how things go. But to the left, they don't want to see that. They don't want to see girls who enjoy masculine or traditionally masculine activities leave that and become women. They want to tell them you're really gender confused. You're 13 years old and the real reason you love playing baseball with all the boys is because you're one of them. That's why. They want this. And damned if I can explain to you why. We are moving on to the closing segment of Uncle Tom Talks. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it as real fake headlines. Real fake headlines is the gaming sensation that is sweeping the internet. This is very, very simple. I'm going to read to you four headlines. All you people, you people, all you have to do is figure out which one is fake. Four headlines, three are real, one is fake. And we are going to launch this right now. If you can successfully guess the correct fake headline, and no prize today. No prize today. We just we gave away $16 million last week. No prize today except the satisfaction of knowing that you figured it out. Okay, here we go. Headline number one. Real fake headlines. Boeing, the aircraft manufacturer, Boeing abandoning crime-ridden Chicago. Has Boeing aircraft said enough's enough and they're pulling out of Chicago? Is Boeing even in Chicago? Headline number two. Santa Clara parents infuriated by heterosexual inclusion in sex ed curriculum. Santa Clara, if you don't know, is in Silicon Valley. It's just north of San Jose. I used to work in Santa Clara um, on Great America Parkway. Headline number three. Killer suffers fatal heart attack while burying victim's body. <laughs> and headline number four. Records reveal multiple attacks on Secret Service by Biden's dog. Okay, there's your four headlines. So uh, get your votes in, open up the chat dialog. I don't see the chat dialog, but uh, Zach, the mix master, does. Let me know if people are voting. All you put the number one, two, four to indicate which one you think is. We're going to do them again rapid fire. Put them on screen. Number one. Headline number one is Boeing abandons crime ridden Chicago. Headline number two is Santa Clara parents infuriated by heterosexual inclusion in sex curriculum. Headline number three killer suffers fatal heart attack while burying his victim's body. <laughs> that one's funny. Whether that's real or not, that should be uh, that should that should be real. And headline number four: Records reveal multiple attacks on Secret Service by Joe Biden's dog. Is the president's dog jumping on his Secret Service security detail? Okay, you got a couple of seconds, and we're going to keep moving. I want to be out of here in about four minutes. Uh, how's the voting looking, Zach? Anybody? We got six and all. 
Six and all. What's that mean? Uh, they think they're all fake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you people right now. One of them, uh, three of them are real. Yeah, I, I've played tricks on you in the past, but I'm not today. One is fake. Three are real. Okay, let's start the reveal. Give me a get update the oh, update the count. What do we got? Uh, still six and all, and then we got a one. Okay. Let's put headline number one on screen. Boeing abandoning crime-ridden Chicago. Let's put image number four on screen. This is true. Boeing Airlines has had enough. If you click over and read this, I think this is from The Hill. I'm not sure. Um, Boeing, you know, people are getting carjacked. Left, they, just, they, they said enough's enough, and they're leaving. They're pulling out. They have a big operation there. They're leaving a skeleton crew, and they're moving elsewhere. Well done, Liberal Mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. Headline number two. Put it on screen. Santa Clara. Parents infuriated by the inclusion of heterosexualism in sex ed curriculum. Put up image number five. And this is the fake. This is the fake. However, however, uh, I do have a Daily Mail page that I want to show in conjunction with this. Zach, can you put that web, that web page on screen? This is today. This is live. This happened here in Colorado. A teacher invited a student, a bunch of students, to what they claimed was an arts club, when in reality it was a queer identity, LBGTQ, uh, etc. Are you really queer type thing? And instructed the students, do not tell your parents. Okay, this really happened. You can find this on Daily Mail right now here in Colorado. So two things. First of all, why does the left want children to be queer? That they actually want them to. It, it's it's bizarre. They want them to be some form of of non. -binary. Why? And number two, and even bigger, if you have to lie about what it is you're doing, what does that say about what it is you're doing? Okay, so you have to call it an art club, but it really isn't. And then once you sucker the kids there under false pretenses, you tell the children, don't tell your parents what we're doing here. Okay, so let's let's leave the let's leave the, the, the episode, the, the issue of parental rights on the side for the time being. That I have a right to know what goes on with my children in my children's school. Let's leave that on the side. If you have to deceive, no matter what it is we're talking about, if you have to deceive people and not let them know what it is you're doing, that tells me everything I need to know about what it is you're really doing. Let's put headline number three on screen. Killer suffers fatal heart attack, where'd it go? Uh, while burying victim's body. Image number six. <laughs> this could be the ultimate in poetic justice. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's sad that two people are dead, but um, you reap what you sow in life sometimes. And apparently this was one of those times. And headline number four. Record reveals multiple attacks on Secret Service by dog. Let's put image number, whatever we're up to, seven on screen. This is really happening. This is really happening. Joe and Jill Biden's German Shepherd has bitten Secret Service agents. I mean, this isn't like onesie twosie. This has happened like 10 or 12 times. Uh, this dog apparently is, is a little on the unhinged side. And um, if you want to go to the web, use any search engine and pull this up, uh, you can find it in a number of places. This dog is biting and, and breaking skin. I mean, drawn blood on a couple of them. Uh, just not a dog that's very friendly, apparently. And um, Secret Service agents are ticked off because the White House and the White House press secretary are kind of burying the story and downplaying it. When in reality, it's happening all the time. Okay, I got to get out. A uh, minute or two over time, we got to clear the decks because the four o'clock slot 
on conservative-daily.com is um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Frank, uh, Frank, uh, Frank speech. And I got to get out of the way. So I tell you what, Zach, take us out and I will see you suckers next week. That sounds good. Very uh, thankful to have him on. Just want to make sure that everyone knows that we will be on next Tuesday. Uncle Tom Talks. You can find us on conservative-daily.com, Rumble, Uncle Tom Talks, DLive, Uncle Tom Talks, Twitch, Uncle Tom Talks, and Telegram, t.me slash Uncle Tom Talks. We'll be giving you the business, giving you the news. So thank you very much. Love to have you guys on. We appreciate it. Keep it coming. God bless.